Okay guys, so uh, what I've done with this uh, uh, little second attempt here is um, since it was way over in terms of the uh, inductance I just uh, kept on winding wire and measuring and measuring and um, it's within 10% of the one that I uh, that I measured um, so uh, I had one slight little accident uh, which is my eyelets this cardboard is not as uh, rigid and hard as the other one uh, and it's uh, when you heat it up the wax that's impregnated in the paper starts to come out and the thing gets quite soft so I actually lost one of the eyelets I had up at this end fortunately I put <laughs> way too many down this end when I was messing around so there's actually four down this end and I only need two so uh, we'll see how that goes so uh, I've put uh, plenty of shellac on that and uh, we let that all dry up uh, and then I need to wind the second coil down at this end so I just want to make sure everything is going to be nice and nice and dry and hard before I go uh, spinning this around in my little winder again so okay so here we go so this time I have set the uh, the width of the coil to be a bit less than the actual I'm up the number of turns. All the software gives you is the uh, it lets you input the resistance per meter, and then it'll tell you the total resistance of the coil. And so I'm going to give that a shot because the I think the uh, it was about 95 ohms is the actual measurement I made of the existing coil. Uh, but there's nothing here about inductance, and so uh, I'll give that a shot, and then we'll. Uh, We'll see what the inductance is like when it's done. And if it's too much, I'll do it like the last time around and I'll tweak it to bring it back. So, all going well, here we go. Okay, well, as you can see here, um, I think I got this end right. Um, but be this because this one is too far away, it's uh, again, it's not very even. Anyway, we'll have it out of there and we'll see what it looks like. Well, guys, how's this for beginner's luck? The original measurement was 10.8 millihenries. Look at that, 10.88. <laughs> and there was a stroke of luck. Okay, we tidy this one up and see if we can get it all back together without damaging it. Okay, uh, guys, here it is, tidied up as best I can. It's not pretty, but uh, essentially here we have two coils in series, as per the uh, requirement. And the uh, inductance of both is close, uh, etc. So, it's physically a little bit different than the original, mainly because... I really needed to have one of the wires come out of here, but the uh, eyelet just fell out when I heated it up um, because of the wax and the card softened up, etc. So uh, the layout is kind of different, uh, but it's logically the same. So I gotta work on how this thing is now gonna physically fit and get installed in the chassis. Um, so that's the next step. In general, I'd say this eyelet approach I have here, it's uh, ultimately not that satisfactory. It sort of kind of works, but um, I really need bigger things with bigger eyelets on here and have them more robust. So the search uh, for future coils uh, continues to find a more effective way of uh, soldering the the wires and taking the leads off to the rest of the uh, circuitry. Okay, um, right. Um, so there's the dual coil fitted. It's physically in a different orientation than the original because of the uh, just how it ended up uh, where the eyelets uh, were available and whatever. 
uh, and of course there were uh, eyelets on the original that were just simply used as tie points. I didn't have those on here and I certainly didn't want to risk using these little tiny eyelets because I just don't think they're up to it. Um, so it's basically wired in, um, certainly functionally as far as I can see, uh, just like the other one. Um, oh, the one thing that is missing, which I have to do, is um, the grid cap for the 6Q7. The wire should go from this point here back out through the uh, to the chassis to the top. And I've lost that little wire. I don't know where it's gone. Um, I definitely had it, uh, but hey, that was over a year ago. <laughs> so um, I'm I'm gonna hunt around, and I hope I can find it in a in a box of bits and pieces somewhere. Um, if not, I'm gonna have to make a grid gap, uh, which is gonna be fun. Um, but hey. There you go. So we'll hunt around for it first. If I can't find it, uh, we'll have to think about making one and uh, go from there. You'll see lots of uh, series resistors in here, mainly because they're really um, non-standard values compared to the E-sets you get these days. And so uh, uh, I've tried my best to get as close as possible to the actual values that are on the circuit diagram. Uh, but yeah, it does look a little bit messy because you got, as I say, lots of resistors in series everywhere. Um, to get as close as possible to the values that it says in the schematic. Of course, the other huge piece of wiring that I have to do is uh, all the upper chassis wiring. Um, which is uh, all these guys which are going to go to the output transformer and stuff. Uh, and so yeah, we'll uh, get started on that. I think if I'm happy that the rest of what's under the chassis is okay. Right, we're uh, in the final stretch, I think, at this point. Um, so um, I've refitted the speaker, or I should I say, I've fitted because it's new. Um, and so these two wires coming down here are from the field coil. Um, but I still have work to do there because um, this field coil measures 450 ohms uh, and in the uh, diagram because it, there, it measures 3000 or it says 3000 because it goes right across between the B plus and ground. Um, so I have to either do one of those uh, uh, resistor capacitor thingies to uh, provide the uh, smoothing on the power supply uh, or I might mess around and see if I can make a, uh, a choke that uh, will uh, be the difference of what this is and what the circuit diagram says. What I don't know of course is if I put the choke in series here so that I get the total resistance right I don't know if the voltage drop across this 450 ohms will be sufficient to um, to energize the uh, the core of the speaker properly or not. Because I don't know what voltage is supposed to go across this. I have no information about this speaker whatsoever. <laughs> um, okay, so that's that bit done. So um, I guess remounting all this hardware and stuff it's nice to see that uh, all the theory seems to work in practice um, although to be really honest I hope I don't have to take this thing back off anytime soon because it is a little bit of a uh, nightmare to get it on there um, and the sequence in which you do things is kind of critical etc etc um, so yeah so I think the physical build the only other thing that I need to do now is um, I need to make a grid cap because I couldn't find that one that I lost uh, the piece of wire from the original set um, so I've put a piece of reasonably heavy screened cable there and I just need to put I have to make a grid cap to go on the top of the tube um, I've done that before but I'm sure I'll be able to MacGyver something that'll work um, so yeah it's kind of looking like it's twin now isn't it um, 
So uh, yeah, we'll get there. I guess the other thing I also have to do, because everything is so critical here, is check that it'll fit in the case, because there's a, a little gap here between the metalwork and the wood, um, which I hope is not dissimilar from the other one. And so yeah, I gotta check all this fits into the cab. Um, I think we'll make it in terms of fit to the cab. It's really right hard up against the uh, right side here from the back. And so um, it's going to be tricky getting uh, this bolt in to hold the uh, to hold it in. But I think we'll be okay. I think I'll make it. Um, so um, yep. At least that seems to be. Uh, it's not perfect, as I say. It, I really need this chassis to go just maybe a millimeter that way, and then we'd be spot on. But. Um, I think it'll be good enough. Um, yeah, I mean, the shaft is spot in the middle of the hole. These two are over that way, so yeah, I could do it coming this way a bit. Um, but I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Um, and so, if all, and all that physical stuff is finally done, then I guess we'll be up for um, testing. Um, boy, that'll be nerve-wracking. <laughs> Hard to think after all this time we're actually getting close to the point where we might actually apply some electricity to this thing. Still, it's looking okay at the moment. So, um, probably more to come on this once I've sorted out how to do this thing with the choke. Um, and uh, yeah, I have kept a, there's a little bit of room underneath where the speaker is. I was deliberately keeping all the components to one side so that I'd have room either for a wire-wound resistor or um, a choke. Uh, and so yeah, I think that's what we got for now. Um, and that's enough for one session. More to come. <laughs>